In this section, we will be incorporating third-party APIs into visualizations. In this video, we will consume Bitcoin API data to make a line chart. We will show the Bitcoin price index over time using data from a Bitcoin API. In this case, we will connect to the Coindesk API. We will briefly review the API that we are working with. Here is the Coindesk API webpage. It's important to note any requirements we may need when using such APIs. Here, we're told to make sure that each page of our app that uses the API includes the text that reads powered by Coindesk linking to their price page. So we will be sure to add this line into our HTML page. We will also review the endpoint we will be using. We will be drawing data over time, so we will use the historical BPI data suggested here. They give an example endpoint to get some historical data. So we will use this endpoint to build our chart. In our index HTML file, we will include a div with a chart wrapper ID that we will use to put our line chart in. We will also include some regular scripts that we will be using. An index.js file, a load data file, a build line chart file, and a library file for any helper functions we might need. We will also be sure to include the text line saying powered by Coindesk with a link to their price page. In our index.js file, we will use a prepared data function. We will use the example API endpoint as a source for our data. Then we will take the resulting data and pass it to a prepare line chart function. Then, after preparing the chart, we will handle updating the line with data values. Let's review our prepare data function. Here we return a promise using D3's JSON API, and we will resolve this promise. Let's inspect what the API data looks like so that we can prepare to transform it to a usable data set for our line chart. Here is what our data looks like. It's an object with some keys, time, disclaimer, and BPI. It looks like BPI has the data we need, where the key is a date value, and the value is the price value that we will be using. Our prepared data function should take this BPI data and convert it to an array with two keys, one key of date and one key of value. So let's update our prepared data function to handle this data transformation. First thing we'll do is introduce a function called convert to array using our data. We will save this as an array data variable and resolve this array data. Let's build this convert to array function. Here's a brief overview of a convert to array function. We use D3's time parsing API to parse the time from a string to a JavaScript time value. D3 offers many options for interpreting time. This percent %y encapsulates the year, this percent %m encapsulates the month, and this percent %d encapsulates the day. In time parse, we include how the time looks like when we put the time into the function, and we will get out a JavaScript time variable. We grab the data's BPI key and put this in an object. We get the keys out of this object, which are all of the dates. We store it in a keys variable. We map through all these keys, and we create an object out of each key. The date in this object will have the parsed date of the key, and the value key in this object will have the value of the selected date. This will return the array. We will update the BPI key in our source object to be just this array. Let's use this data to prepare and build our line chart. In our prepare line chart function, in our build line chart file, we will make some helper functions to get the x variable from the data using a function that gets the date, and we will get the y variable from the data that's a function that gets the value. We will also simplify the chart data by selecting the source data BPI key. We will build a promise that returns some data. We will include some regular patterns. We select the div and store it in a variable using D3's select method. We include a margin object to include some space around the visualization if we'd like. We use our get width and height function to get the width and height of the div and store these values in variables. We assign attributes to the div using width and height. We create an SVG object using an append to parent helper function that we transferred from previous examples. We append an SVG to the parent div, giving it a class of SVG wrapper and translating this by margins. We also assign some attributes passing the height and width to our SVG element. We also append a group element using the same append to parent helper function. We append this group element to our SVG parent element. We give it a class of G wrapper, and we also translate this group element using our margins. We'll also build some scales for our chart. The X scale will use D3's scale time API. We will set the domain to the extent of our data. D3's extent method gets the minimum and the maximum of an array. Here, our array is our chart data, and the value which we will use to build the extent is the x value from the data, which, from our helper function, 
is a function on the data getting the date value. This D3 extent will return an array with two values, the minimum and the maximum of our date values. The range will fit our scale between a zero value and the width minus the margin right. We will build a Y scale using D3's scale linear API, reusing D3's extent method to get the extent of the Y values from the data and setting this to our domain for the Y scale. And we will set the range where the bottom of our Y scale will be the height less the margins and the top of our Y scale will reach to the margin top value. Now we have an X scale and a Y scale to build the framework of our chart. We will also build our axes in this prepare line chart function. Our X axis uses our append apparent helper function and appends a group element to the group object, gives it a class of x axes, and translates this axis zero to the right, and we translate it down to the height less margins. So the x axis will be at the bottom of the element. Our y axis uses the same append to parent helper function, appends another group to our group parent, gives it a class of y axis, and does not transform this y axis. D3 does the visual transformation for us in this case. In both our x axis and our y axis, we use D3's call method to call D3's axes functions using the axis bottom for the x-axis and the axis left for our y-axis. And we use the coordinating scales for each axis. Now that we've prepared our line chart and made axes on the visualization, let's work with our handle line update function and draw the line on the chart. In our library.js file, we will build this handle line update function. The first thing we'll do in our handle line update function is use D3's line API to make a line object variable. We use d3.line and we set the x value of the line to the x scaled value of our date and we set the y value of the line to the y scaled value of our value. We also set the curve and in this case we will use d3.curve basis. The D3 API has many examples of curves to use. In D3's API for D3 shape where we will find our line we can find many options that D3 provides for handling curves. There's a curve basis, a curve basis closed, which creates a closed line, a curve basis open, a curve bundle, where you can set a context value to change the shape of the line, curve cardinal, which also includes a context value, where you can change some of the ways the line looks, a curve cardinal, and several more options. After building our line object variable, we will use the variable to create a path on the screen. We will select the G wrapper and we will append a path to the G wrapper and we will assign some attributes to the path. We won't give it a fill, we will give it a steel blue stroke with a stroke width of four. We will give it a class of path and we will set the data attribute using D and assign the data attribute to the line object on our BPI data. Now we have taken some Bitcoin API data and rendered a line chart showing the price index of Bitcoin over time. We've also included the text powered by Coindesk, which includes a link to Coindesk's price page. In this video, we consumed some Bitcoin API data and drew a line chart out of it.